Hi, this is Rad from MR Sports Cars. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about Porsche 981 Boxster hoods. Everything you need to know about them, including operating them and how to maintain them, keep them clean. So here I've got a 2014 981 Boxster S with a black hood, rhodium silver paintwork. I'll show you how to use it. So first of all, I'll show you inside the car how to use it. So the, the usual way you'd expect to use, use a hood. So you'd first of all need to put the key in the ignition, put it on so that the uh, all of the lights on are on at the dash. You don't necessarily have to start it as long as you've got a strong enough battery that hasn't got a low charge it will allow you to use it without turning the car on so I'll just do that now so you've got the two buttons here which operate the hood this one is for opening this one's for closing and to operate these buttons you don't push them in you actually you pull them towards you so I just pull this one towards me and hold it um, hold it up like that and it will lower the windows then it will disengage that little electric clamp at the front older generation cars so 98 a 986 had a um, manual hook and 987 Gen 1 and Gen 2 had a hook there. So it's lowered the, the hood there and it's raised the windows back up. So that's it fully open and it should sit nice and flat, relatively flush with that edge there. And these should have folded back down as well. So that's it fully open. And then to close it you you repeat the same exercise but with this button so you hold this button up again it drops the windows opens up those flaps and it brings it forward and that clip should meet its socket there and then the last step is those windows raise on both sides so that's how you operate it normally using the controls in the car and that can be operated i believe it's up to 50 kilometers an hour so it's around mid 30 miles an hour on the move uh, and that's up and down so it's a very very versatile system it takes under 20 seconds to raise and lower i think it's around 14 actually it's a very quick system and uh, makes it really usable to have the roof down and then all of a sudden you get cold or the rain starts which is quite common here in the uk you can raise it and not have to stop at the side of the road you can just slow down to around 30 and operate the hood with those buttons I've just shown you. The other way you can operate it in the UK, and I'm not sure if this is the same for other countries as well. Uh, the US may be, this isn't enabled on these cars. Um, you can hold down the unlock button, un unlock button and it should start operating the hood. So it does exactly the same procedure as if you were using the buttons in the car. There we go. And then the last step is those little bits and then the windows raised so that's that's it fully open using the key and then to close it I won't close it all the way because I'm now going to show you how to sort of look around the edges to make sure that there's no uh, debris in the drainage holes so to lock it it's the same procedure you hold down the lock button but I'm going to stop it so I'm going to let go of the button about there and it will beep to tell me that it's not happy. Well, it's locked the car as well because I pressed the lock button. Now I'll get some, some torches and things to show you. So I've got here LED and I've got a spot torch as well. And um, this useful claw just to, if there is anything, you can use it to sort of grab stuff. Let me lay that out so you can see. So you can use that claw there to grab anything that's sort of out of reach. I may not need that, so I'll just bring a torch for now. So down in this area here, you wanna make sure that there's no sort of like excessive leaf debris. And then down here, just below this, this sort of tube there, maybe that's a bit too bright. So there's a, there's a little tube there, which you can just sort of move to the side a little bit. Don't have to move it too much. And there is a hole underneath. It's probably not actually coming, but it's basically just below that tube there. And you just wanna make sure there's no leaves or anything caught in that entrance to that way there. Because basically all of the water that sort of gathers here drips down into that sort of drainage channel. This is a big sort of like guttering rail 
that drains all the water from, from the hood mechanism. I'll just have a look at the other side and do the same thing. So you've got that same uh, rubber tube. I'm sorry about the, the camera quality here, but basically there's that drainage area there that goes all the way underneath that tube here. And if you move that to the side, I've just got the end of a paint, a, a, like an art brush here, and you'll be able to look underneath. It's obviously easier when you haven't got a camera in the way, but you can look at the leaves, if there's any leaves or debris. Um, obviously clean these bits as well, just to make sure that there's nothing sort of get potentially going to get in the way um, and clog up those drainage areas there. Now if I just do the roof a bit more, Again, using the remote, I'll show you the other I'll show you the other side of it. So um, from this section here, so this section here, obviously the water runs down this, and when this is closed, it will it will sort of, there will be a seal, but some of it will run onto that carpeted area. If it's particularly heavy rain, it will run sort of down there. And then on this bit, you can see through, through the glass, you can see that it scoops down into those, those gray, uh, those black plastic areas. And you can just see that if, if there was anything sort of accumulating down the bottom there, in that section, you would then have to clear that out using that claw that I've shown you, the metal clasp thing. So I'm just gonna open the roof now and show you looking in the car where to look for if there is potentially any water accumulating in the car because it can be an issue with these cars. Um, so let me just move this forward. So under here, so if, if this area was blocked, it could potentially flow actually into the car and you don't really want that because underneath the seats, there are these lower areas under the carpet which have the um, rear body control module. If the car has bows, it will have the bows amplifier. I think under the, the driver's seat, the body control module is normally under the passenger seat. If there's a telephone module as well, it could be under there, alarm system. So basically, if you get water into the lowest part of the car, which unfortunately is where water would flow if it, if it does get in the car, then it can start making the car doing all sorts of funny things, the alarm going off randomly in the night, the, even the hood opening while it's raining because water's pouring in and short-circuiting that whole control system. And it, it just starts acting randomly, putting the hazard lights on. I've, I've seen it before with, with earlier cars, that being a, being a problem. And unfortunately, in most cases, you have to replace, dry out the whole car, take the seats out, dry out all the carpets, um, dry out the the area under the seats with the seats out and then fit in new control modules which are very expensive there i think they're at least six or seven hundred pounds uh, for the rear control module but obviously i haven't looked that up recently so it's well worth making sure that you're not getting water accumulating here there is some foam which will absor absorb a certain amount of water under here before it gets to the bit where the issue is which is under those seats so i'll just show you that now So what you need to do um, on the on the 911s, there's a there's a break here, but on these, the, the carpet is actually higher up. But you can you can still pull. There's, there's a split here, and you can sort of pull it forward. You can just reach your hand round and feel if there's any wetness at all in that area. Then you know that it could be running down down the side of the car and down along these these side bits here. Underneath the underneath the seat belt and down into that area. So this 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 foam here should be free from dampness. But that's something to check if you, if you're looking to buy a car. And then to push it back, it does mould back into place quite well. Obviously, you have to manipulate it a little bit. 
just give it a tap just to make sure it, it's returned to its shape. So that's on the passenger side and I'll show you on the, the driver's side as well. Let me lift up this seat actually so you can see. A bit higher. So under here, you've got like a hollow underneath the seats. This car doesn't have bow, so it may not have... Oh, it does have a separate amplifier though, so it's got an amplifier in there. So that you wouldn't want that to get filled with water. All that wiring that goes to the seats to also be submerged in water. So it's well worth checking this. And most warranties will not cover for water ingress. So again, just put your hands in that back area there and just feel underneath along here for any water this car's absolutely perfect absolutely dry as you'd expect it's the first thing i do when i when i go to buy these cars is check well, one of the first things i do is, is check under these carpets to make sure that there is no water if there is make sure that everything is working on the car and, and raise the carpets up make sure they can dry out and clear out all the channels clear out all the channels that are in the boot area which I've already shown you to make sure that it doesn't uh, fill up again so there is all the all the bits in terms of maintenance and checking whether a hood is is in a um, good state and working as it should I'll just uh, raise it up with the key so you hold the button down and you'll see that red light flashing at the front if it is working you also see the one just above the hazard hazard lights um, hazard warning lights on the dash also flashing to say it's got the signal so there's the car fully the hood fully engaged and then the other thing I was going to talk about quickly was the maintenance of these hoods. So I personally use um, a great kit actually um, by Autoglim. I haven't got the sponge here actually. Um, convertible soft top clean and protect. So it has, let me grab the sponge as well so I can show you that. Okay, so this is the set. So it has um, two sprays in it and it has this sponge here. And what you do, it's got all the instructions on the pack. I think it's about 24 pounds or something, but it does last, I would say, at least two or three applications. So it has a spray um, a soap. So what you'd first do is get the hoods nice and wet with a hose. You can pressure wash it as well, but I'd, I'd not recommend using a pressure washer too much, just in case you, in fact, inadvertently flood, flood out the, the, um, the interior. But what I would say is just get the whole thing wet with a hose so that it, it goes sort of um, sort of like a, a glossy, a more glossy black. So, you know, you've covered the whole thing. If it's already got prote uh, a hood protector on it, it will bead quite a lot. And that's fine. Um, it, once it's fully wet, either beaded or not, you then spray it with this, lightly spray the whole, whole thing. And you'll see the sort of water start to absorb even more into the hood with this spray and then leave it for about 20, 30 seconds and then agitate it with this one. And you just literally do little circular motions just to make it froth up and you'll see the hood actually going white with all the, all the soap bubbles. So you do that so you've covered the whole of the hood, all the way at the back. Of, try and avoid the glass. Don't spray the glass um, or the windows or the rest of the car with this stuff. Um, it won't damage it, but it's, it's just really designed for that material. Then you rinse it out until the water basically doesn't froth up anymore, doesn't soap up, and you just leave it to sort of, as long as it's out of the sun, you just leave it to, to settle and leave the water to sort of drain away a little bit. And then you take the other spray in this kit, which is the soft top protector, and you gently, you spray a fine mist over the whole hood and you just leave it to dry up, the hood up, 
with this sort of setting while the water is is being removed so if having it wet and spraying that means that you get an even coat of protector on the whole hood and then once that's all dry and it's all set when you pour water on this hood it should sort of bead nicely and sort of just run off rather than absorb into the fabric and that's that's then a hood protector and i'd recommend doing that um twice a year so basically b before the end of the year sort of like autumn time clean it properly clean it out get into these crevices here with that sponge um, to make sure that there's no sort of like uh, green fungus build up algae for build up nothing around these areas here these rubbers haven't got like little mushrooms of of uh, fungus and then clean it all out treat it and and it should remain sort of protected all winter um, obviously if you get any bird poos on this clean it with it with a damp cloth sort of as soon as you can and then in the spring also do the same using that same kit and and the hood should be that that's all the maintenance you'll need to do for the hood so cleaning it and also making sure all of those drain areas that i showed you in that section there and down the sides are all clear and just every once in a while just putting your hands behind the seats just to make sure um, it's all dry uh, because if you do get some water there it's not the end of the world but as long as you catch it soon enough then it won't cause any damage and you'll be able to dry it out and make sure all the drainage holes in the in the back of the car are all are all clear so it will not carry on building up water and potentially damaging the electronics on the car so that's all i wanted to talk about in terms of hood maintenance on a 981 boxster um, so this applies to the boxster uh, 2.7 and as well as the, the 3.4 um, so the S models, it implies the GTS as well. So any car that has that hood mechanism, the Spider would be slightly different in terms of how you operate the, the hood, but the drainage holes should be in the same place as well, I think. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, please don't hesitate to comment below if, if you want to know anything else about maintaining a hood on a, on a 981 Boxster. Thanks for watching.